This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is giving me another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video and this time it is going to be on a new format mermail combo for basically how I believe you should be you know at least trying to play the deck now I often get questioned a lot on the viability of mermails in any specific format it's definitely one of my favorite decks that I've ever played definitely if I were ever to make a list of my top five or top ten favorite decks I've ever played in the game's history, then Mermails is definitely somewhere around third or fourth on that list. Like, it's definitely really high up there. The deck is very versatile, it can play in complex game states as well as simplified game states. It's very good at board removal because of the Atlanteans being heavy infantry and marksmen. I mean, they hit all face ups and all set cards essentially in a vacuum, unless the cards are things like Magic Specters or non targetables in essence. But basically, the deck has very good power plays, has very good board removal, has very good versatility it has very good capabilities about it now more recently than in the past obviously because of the fact that i played some dual videos using new format mermails on my channel without norden i've been having a lot more people ask me on the viability of the deck in the format now i personally think the deck in its purest form of you know go second kill your opponent is the worst it's ever been in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. every single deck ABC, Zoo, Masterpiece, all these different things just cause you to not be able to resolve Neptivus, and if you're not allowed to resolve Neptivus, you're not allowed to play, and all that sort of stuff just kind of snowballs. You basically have a very, very hard time trying to go second with Mermails as compared to when Neptibus came out and it was you know a little bit more streamlined of a format and not every deck had engine cards that they could just summon and were removal as well like ABC Dragon Buster, Dryden't, Masterpiece, even going further back to Full Metal Foes, Alkaheast, uh, things like that, uh, Beatrice for Farfa, like it's just been it's been really problematic to try and play the deck going second. Now with Totally Awesome being released past formats, particularly around YCS Anaheim last year in the very, very end area of 2016, the deck had a lot of resurgence in popularity because of your Bahamut Shark plays into Totally Awesomes and your Frogs. Now, the question is whether or not the deck is viable in this format. As a going second deck, I believe no, but that is what I'm bringing you this video for. I'm here to show you a combo of how you can play the deck utilizing the Frogs still, even though Norden does not exist and be able to have good, reliable, going first plays, in theory. Uh, this, so this is one combo I'm going to be showing you. I believe if you're trying to play this deck going first, then you definitely need to be playing it in a method that allows you to get the most benefit out of going first, so that you can go first unimpeded, and that you can try to set up as many totally awesomes as possible, or take as many cards out of your opponent's hand as possible, so that their resources are not very good. Like I said before, this deck is very good at playing through complex and simplified game states. It's very well equipped to handle both. So, what I'm going to be showing you is a three card hand loop that ends with a totally awesome, you take three cards out of your opponent's hand, and it is a three card combo for you to start off with. It is a Neptibus, Mermel Abysteus, and Swap Frog combo. A lot of people have been cutting the frogs from the Mermel deck since Norden went away, thinking that like, the correlation that I see is that people think that because Norden is gone, you're not going to be making Bahamut Shark nearly as much so totally awesome loses value but that's just not the case the frogs have even more value now than they had in the past because they allow you to make totally awesomes and things like that as well as do things like have cool plays triggering your guns and stuff like that but this is a three card combo it's a bit specific but i mean you have a lot of infinite variations with this deck but anyway so this three card combo takes three cards out of your opponent's hand and ends with a totally awesome essentially removing four resources from your opponent uh, and you end up you know on the plus end of the spectrum. but So you're going to normal summon your Neptibus, send Dragoons to Grave, and add another copy of Dragoons to your hand. Now the Dragoons in Grave is going to trigger. Now, unfortunately, there is a Bricky card you have to play in this list if you want to do a three card hand loop, and that is Mermail Abyss Lead. But ultimately, mm, it's probably the pros might outweigh the cons here. Uh, but I am lagging a bit on old Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, but anyway. Off of this first Dragoons, you're going to add your Mermel Abyss lead, because you're only going to be able to get two Dragoon searches, because we're not messing with Insta Fusion Norden or anything like that. There are definitely other combos that get more uh, Dragoon searches, 
but this is what we're messing with right here and now. But so you get to use your Abyss Tius here, discarding the Dragoons you just added to your hand. The Abyss Tius will summon itself specifically in attack mode. You want to summon it in attack mode because you want to be able to tribute it for Abyss Lead, because Abyss Lead has the tribute in attack position Mermel monster. Has to be a Mermel, has to be in attack position. But so off of the Teus, you're going to add Gun to hand, and then off the Dragoons, you're going to add your Mulan Glacia. So your Mulan Glacia will be able to come to your hand, you'll be able to take two cards out of your opponent's hand as soon as you hit five waters in Grave. Now this is where the Swap Frog becomes really important. Swap Frog allows you to fuel your Grave for a ton of cards, for a ton of water monsters. Swap Frog being able to discard these cards instantly fuels between, you know, three and four waters in your Grave. And we're at two waters in Grave, so guess what we want to try and do? Fuel waters in the Grave. But so you're going to use Swap Frog discarding Abyss Lead to special summon itself. And your gun would be able to trigger off your Swap Frog, so we're going to be doing that as the next step. So Swap Frog here is going to send your Ronin Toten from deck to grave, and then you're going to be able to use Swap Frog's effect to bounce itself to your hand. So Swap Frog goes to hand, and then you're going to be able to summon it again for one additional time this turn. This time by bitching the gun. Now gun will be able to trigger its effect, and it'll be able to bring back your Abyss Lead. So that's how we're going to get to that, you know... So that card that we uh, that we want to take out of our opponent's hand in addition to the Mulan Glace. But this math actually ends up working out perfectly in terms of numbers. And Ronin Toten is just an amazing card for Grave Manipulation as well. Because Ronin Toten can remove itself and one other card from Grave. So you're able to basically get into your Mulan Glace ranges. But so, this Swap Frog is going to send another Swap Frog from deck to Grave. And your Abyss Lead is going to summon itself. And now from here, we have exactly five waters in Grave, because of the fact that we went to six off the Swap Frog discarding a card and then sending a card from deck to Grave, but because Gund was what we discarded, it caused a lead to be summoned, which removed a water from Grave, and we conveniently have one slot open. So Mulan Glace will be summoned, and you'll use Mulan Glace to take two cards out of your opponent's hand. Now, we don't really have to worry about Graveyard Floater effects as much as previous formats, so making Dweller isn't that big of an issue. In previous formats, when we were going first trying to do this, we had to worry about BA, because that was a really big deck in the format, but that deck's kind of gone onto the wayside. Uh, but so now from here, you've Mulan Glaced, and now you've got this lead that's in attack mode, so you can distribute it off for, uh, for uh, you can tribute the Teus, rather, off for the Abyss lead, take a card out of your opponent's hand, and now you've opened up a space for yourself. Now what do we have access to? We have the Ronin Toten with the Swap Frog Engrave. So what you're going to do is you're going to banish that, you're going to summon your Ronin Toten, and then you're going to overlay the Swap Frog and the Ronin Toten into your Totally Awesome. And from here, you're just in a fantastic situation. You've turned three cards into four, because you've got the Mulan Glace, you've got the Toad, you've got the Ineptibus, and you've got the Lead. The Lead and the Mulan Glace are big beaters that are being very oppressive to your opponent already, because the game has been forced into a simplified game state for your opponent, because they now went from, three, uh, went from five cards down to two, and they're going to be drawing to their third card, and Totally Awesome negates a card. So they're going to be playing the game with two cards. Totally Awesome complicates the game state a bit because it allows you to add cards back to your hand. Now you can add back Dragoons, you can add back Gund, you can add back Teus, one of these cards. Depending on what the other cards in your hand were to meld your game state plays for the for the uh, following turn, rather. But so you've got Mulan Glace, you've got Abyss Lead, and these things are huge. And those are very, very big threats and big monsters that are going to cause your opponent's problems in a simplified game state. In a very simplified game state, big monsters are huge threats because your opponent has to be able to deal with them in whatever way, shape, or form possible. Now, we do exist in a zoo format currently where zoo gets a lot of value out of simple one-card plays, but that is actually just fine because we're going to be basically ahead of our opponent resource-wise for the entirety of the game as, as it concludes, essentially, because we turned three cards into four, but we also stripped our opponent of four cards. So, like, it's it's a fantastic situation. And then the Totally Awesome by itself gets to summon a Swap Frog from your deck next turn, or Dupe Frog if you choose to run it, which actually might be a pretty decent, like, choice because it, you know, allows you to get some searches, it allows you to do certain things that might not elsewhere el otherwise be, like, possible. Um, in terms of continuing the game state. but So this is just one combo of how this deck can be approached for the new format. I think Swap Frog is very important. I think it's definitely something you need to be playing because it allows you to at least make totally awesome. Because, I mean, you've got the regular Teus plays that allow you to make double Bahama Shark, double Toad still. That still exists, even without Norden. We have things like Silent Angler. We have things like, uh, uh, like Aqua Spirit. We've got these cards that allow you to allow that play to exist. 
you should definitely be playing the frogs to strengthen your first turn plays because that's all they end up doing. But anyway, that's just been a quick, well, not really quick, unfortunately, because my stuff is lagging and I like to uh, to ramble, essentially. <laughs> I like to speak what's on my mind. But anyway, this has just been a combo video showing you a first turn combo for Mermails going into the format, a way to approach the deck because a lot of people seem to be going about it in the wrong way. Like, they just, they're cutting the frogs, they're taking the deck down to very bare bones, and they're like, we're going to play this deck going second. And that's not really how you should be approaching it, in my opinion, because the deck didn't get good again until we got Totally Awesome, and the deck became able to go first and just vomit out Totally Awesomes alongside making Moving Glaze to drop cards out of your opponent's hand. Forcing your opponent into a simplified game state while you still maintain higher advantage yields and a complex game state for yourself is the way this deck got back on the map back last November. And so it's definitely the way the deck needs to go forward, but I see people cutting frogs and I see people doing this and that and the Norden being gone kind of hurts a bit, a fair bit, because it took a huge combo piece out of the format, but there's ways to play around with it if you're capable of, you know, deep, you know, play string oriented thought processes with this deck. If you're very familiar with this deck, you should be able to find bypassing routes because of the way that Neptibus functions. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you want to see more new format Mermo combos for like how you can approach playing the deck turn ones in the new format and all that stuff, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. All that sort of nonsense. Links as always are in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages if you want to check those out, if you want to support the channel directly, if you want to get access, insider access rather, into how the channel operates and what goes up when and all that sort of stuff, or if you want to get access to a private Discord server with me and a bunch of other people to discuss Yu-Gi-Oh! and various other fandoms, then definitely go check out the Patreon page in the description as I've already said. If you want to support the channel and help me be able to make content well into the future and also fund some additional better quality content that could hopefully be coming out in the future, then definitely go check that out if you want to assist that funding and assist that project and assist that stuff. But other than that, if you're new here, consider subscribing. I'd love to welcome you on board to this little dysfunctional family based around this channel, this community of like-minded individuals that just love Yu-Gi-Oh! Other than that, if you like the content you've been seeing, then definitely like this video to show your support for that, and I will continue to make content along these lines. So with that out of the way, thank you again for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. Again, if you want to see more new format combo tutorials for the Mermel deck, not utilizing Norden, uh, basically just my opinions on how the deck should be played, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. But other than that, take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.